Hey there, everybody. If you follow this channel or my Instagram, you know that I've been pretty into volumetric video. Just as a quick recap, volumetric video is moving images that you can move around and look at from various angles, sort of like holograms. There are a few ways to capture volumetric video, but most require a lot of camera hardware and studio conditions. While very cool, I want to be able to walk around and photograph people in places out in the real world and capture those images volumetrically. Henri Cartier-Bresson said that photography is a spontaneous impulse coming from an ever-attentive eye which captures the moment and its eternity. And it's my goal to capture the spontaneity of people living their lives and their surroundings in the volumetric medium. A little over a year ago, I posted a video about multiplane imagery, which is multiple flat planes of images that can be stacked together and manipulated to create a sense of parallax and three-dimensional space. I also talked about how I was using stereo photography together with some AI techniques to turn stereoscopic images into 32 layers of PNGs, which I was then stacking in Unity to create a volumetric representation of the scene, and then using VR to look at those scenes in full 3D, with 6 degrees of freedom, or 6 to off movement. Further, I extended that stereo to multiplane pipeline to video, and packed all 32 layers into an MP4, allowing for volumetric video, which could also be played back in Unity or in VR. There's a link in the description below to that video if you're interested. Of course, there were some obvious limitations, such as not truly being able to see behind objects due to this sort of stack of cards looking distortion that came with too much sixth off movement. So that brings us up to today, and back to the images you saw at the beginning of this video, which are some of the results from my latest project. I've graduated from a stereoscopic camera rig, which had two cameras, to this custom rig with five GoPros in a 3D printed frame, which you could call a sparse light field array. Although, if we look at this 2019 project called Local Light Field Fusion, they were using 25 views, which was considered a sparse light field. And Google's Breakthrough Light Field Array had 48 cameras, which was also considered sparse. So maybe we should call this a super sparse light field array. Anyhow, let's take a look at how it works. Here we are in Ubuntu Linux, and I've already downloaded some footage from the five GoPros and put them into folders labeled cams one through five. I'll preview this one video right now, and you can see it's some footage of people getting on a bus. This is a script I wrote to ingest all the footage. I select the folder with all the videos and hit process, and essentially it just turns those videos into image sequences while keeping them organized. So you can see, now there's a folder with this image sequence, and actually there's one for each camera. Now comes the main script I wrote. I select the folder that contains all the image sequences and hit the sync button. You see, while the GoPro array can be run from a single button, they aren't hard synced, so I'll need to sync the sequences by eye to ensure that everything aligns properly as each frame is processed. I'll speed through this section, but I'm just looking for a feature I can sync them on, usually a footfall or something like that. Sync is important on dynamically moving objects like people, in order to ensure that the resulting volumetric images are as clear and distortion-free as possible. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now comes the real challenge, which is running Colmap on these images. Colmap is a structure from motion pipeline that solves the camera poses for this frame from each camera, and it's essential to the rest of the process. Let's go ahead and take a look at the frame Colmap is analyzing. Here you can see camera 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All a single moment in time, from five slightly different viewpoints. So now going back to Colmap, it will try to figure out what the pose is for each camera. I'm using Superglue and Superpoint right now, which is a more advanced flavor of Colmap and can have better results, but doesn't always work, especially with so few camera angles. Colmap also has an element of randomness to it, which is why I run it multiple times, even without changing any parameters. I also do try adjusting some parameters and running it again, and I can tell it's getting close to a solve, but it just doesn't do it. So I'm going to switch over to vanilla Colmap instead of Superglue, 
is that can have a better chance of getting a solve. And there we go, Cold Map is finished, and now it's running the neural network, which will output eight layers of color images and a depth map and alpha mask for each layer. The depth map gives each layer a three-dimensional structure, and the alpha mask allows for transparency in each layer. Here you can see the output, which is arrayified into a single image with eight layers of color imagery on the top and the corresponding mask and depth map combined on the bottom. So now, taking a look at this in Unity, we're able to combine all eight layers with their corresponding depth and alpha information, and you can see how it all comes together to form the full volumetric representation of the scene. I can move it all around, look at it from different angles. It's definitely not perfect, and there can be quite a bit of distortion, but it allows for a lot more movement than the multiplane technique, and also does allow you to see behind some objects. Now, we just have to process the rest of the frames of the video, starting at frame zero and going to frame 410. Here is the config file for this set of images. You can see the sync information on the bottom there. And yeah, just hit the process button and off it goes. We only had to run Cold Map that one time, which is why getting a good solve is so important. It takes about 15 seconds to process each frame, and it looks like it's gonna take about 102 minutes to finish. You can see the finished frames start to pop up here in the output directory. Looks good so far. And just a silly transition later, and we're just about done. There we go. There's the full finished layered depth image sequence. Great. Now it's just another silly transition and we'll finish up in Windows. Just running another script now to turn the image sequence into a video. And here's the finished MP4. Again, you can see the eight layers of color images on the top and the corresponding eight layers of depth and alpha information on the bottom. Compare this to the output from my previous project, which was 32 layers on the top and 32 corresponding masks on the bottom with no depth information, and you can see how this is a more efficient use of space, allowing for higher resolution per layer. Popping back to Unity, and here's the full volumetric video in action. If I enable this red and white sphere, I can place it right into the 3D scene. I can move it around, put it behind the bus, and you can see it's sort of buried halfway in the ground in the background. I'm moving the viewport around to give you a better sense of the space, and the sphere really does feel incorporated into the scene. I'll go ahead and make the sphere smaller now and place it inside of the bus. Pretty cool. I'm going to disable the sphere for now and show you some of the tools I use to render videos out of Unity. This script moves the camera around, making wigglegrams, which helps showcase volumetric captures on traditional 2D displays, like social media, while still giving a sense of depth and perspective. I have some parameters that let me control things, like how much movement in each axis there is. So here I'm increasing the movement laterally in the x-axis. Here I'm turning on a virtual window that clips out edge areas that might be too distorted.
Here, I'm stopping the movement in the z-axis so you can see what that looks like. And then I turn it back on, and increase the frequency of the z-axis movement. So basically, I play with these settings until I get something that looks good and gives a good sense of the scene. I'll turn the sphere back on for now and move it a little bit. The sphere is also the focus of the wiggle gram movement, so moving it around can be used to draw attention to different areas. And now I'll start the capture, which uses Unity Recorder. It'll do one loop and then stop automatically. And we're done. Here's the captured video in VLC. Cool. So how can you experience these volumetric videos? Well, I want to talk a little bit about Cake Player, which is an app I've been developing for playing back these layered depth videos on a variety of platforms. I call it Cake Player because it's got layers. Get it? Okay, well anyway, here are those videos you've seen a couple times already. These were actually captured on the Windows desktop version of Cake Player which lets you drag the videos around in real time with the mouse. And here is Cake Player on the Looking Glass Portrait, which is a light field display. This display lets you see images in 3D without the need for any glasses, and also lets you move around the display and look at these videos from different angles, much like a real hologram. I'm going to rotate the display back and forth to give you a sense of what it looks like in real life. The looking glass is connected to my PC, which is running Cake Player, and gives me the ability to move the video around and reframe it with the mouse as well. Let's take a look at another scene I captured recently. This is the fountain at DreamWorks Animation, dyed red for Halloween, and you can see some folks dressed as Jedi in the background. Here's another scene, a couple of people taking pictures of a lowrider parked on Melrose. And here's a close-up of that lowrider, with a do not touch the car sign in the window. Let's hop over to Cake Player on the Loom Pad 2, which is an Android tablet with an auto stereoscopic display and eye tracking, meaning this also displays in 3D without the need for glasses, and it tracks your position, shifting the perspective around in concert with your eyes. It's a really cool effect, and is also self-contained, so Cake Player is running natively on the device. No need to be connected to a PC. Here's the Halloween fountain again. And here's that lowrider. And finally, here's the planter from the beginning of this video again.
Cool. Now let's hop over to VR. This is Cake Player running on the MetaQuest 2. Again, totally standalone. No need to connect to a PC or use Airlink or anything like that. In this version, you can stream the video, which is slightly lower resolution, or you can download the video to the device, which is at 8K resolution, 7680 by 4288. I can also adjust the scale of the scene, which is a little hard to tell in this video, but it makes it feel more like a diorama or dollhouse in scale. Let's take a look at some more footage. Here's that Halloween fountain again. and the planter and gate you've seen so many times already. Here's Hollywood Boulevard on a rainy day. Looks like somebody's umbrella broke. And finally, here's a woman with her dog in Silver Lake. If you'd like to check any of this out, Cake Player for Mac and PC can be downloaded from my website. And if you have a looking glass, that can be found there as well. There are links in the description. To check it out on Quest, you can join the open beta, which can also be found on my website. Or a direct link is in the description as well. The Loompad version is coming soon, so I'll add a link to that when it's available. And that's going to do it for this video. Like and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing, post a comment if you have any thoughts or questions, and follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see more frequent posts. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.